Hey everybody, it's Ad the Red. Welcome back at long last to Highway Blossoms, a game I have been meaning to finish for quite some time now. I do not know why it has taken me this long to get back to it. I'm not even entirely sure why I, I like took a hiatus from it, which is all, the only thing I can really describe my absence from this game as, because I never intended to drop it. I just said, you know what, sweat? I just said, you know what, let me do something else different for a bit, for some reason. And Right off I went and just didn't come back for like a full year almost, I think. Uh, something like that. Anyway, uh, the game has gotten a major update, I believe, where it now voice acted dialogue, uh, as well as a number of other little bitty changes and overhauls here and there, but, um, and I believe uh, owners of the game got it all for free. Uh, at least the preferences seem to suggest that, and their, uh, the dev updates. So, uh, at long last, let me go and get back in this. Also, the 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 uh, the the, uh, the voiced dialogue would be nice because it means I won't have to read absolutely everything. I can take a break here, man. I won't ruin their voices as much anymore. So, yeah. Anyway, carrying on. Blazing hot tears streamed down my cheeks as I stumbled to the motorhome. I'm choking. I'm choking and there's nothing I can do to stop it. How could I forget, even though for only a second? Am I really that heartless? I want to throw up. I can barely stand, tearing down all the magnets in the fridge as I trip over my own tears. The next thing I know, I'm falling onto the bed. And even though I land on its stiff concrete springs, I still feel like I'm falling. The ceiling's getting further and further away as I sink deeper. I jerk myself up, faced with a photo that has comforted and haunted me for so long. For a second, I smile again too, but then I remember, and it fades just as quickly. The tears start flowing again, harder than ever before. I curl up in a ball and bury my face into my knees. It doesn't help muffle my crying, cover the shame, or even make me feel any better. I just cry. The cracks have been forming for a while and now I've shattered. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to glue myself back together. It never occurred to me just how hard it would be when he was gone. Growing up, I wasn't just his responsibility. We were each other's responsibility. How many credit cards did I max up in those last few months? Even after he told me to stop, I kept pushing. Bank calls, doctor calls, middle of the night ER visits, everything. But nothing helped. Nothing. I tried so hard, but in the end I had to watch my best friend, the only person who ever wanted me, wither away. He held up his end of the bargain. Through every discovery, every stupid heartbreak, and every fight with Ma, he always took care of me and always just loved me. I couldn't hold up mine, though. I failed. Even now, I keep finding holes in everything I did. I could have found a specialty hospital. I could have read up on more new... F more on new forms of medicine, too. I could have, but I didn't. And now he's gone. My pants are damp. They've been soaking up all my tears, but I don't care. I just want my grandpa back. The motorhome door opens and brushes against the outside wall, followed by soft footsteps that creak on the floor. Marina. I try to act quick, sneaking a few final sniffs in before wiping away my tears, but it's no use. They just keep trickling down. She appears in the doorway. I turn away and drown out the sobbing with my hand. It's so embarrassing. She shouldn't have to see me like this, but I don't think I can muster enough composure to ask her to leave without breaking down. Marina reaches out for me, drenched with worry. But realization sets in and her eyes soften, reflecting some deep sense of genuine empathy and love. Silent, she sits down next to me and wraps her arms around my head before I can squirm away. Cradling me on her lap, she caresses my hair and cheeks to the tips of her fingers. My crying stops as I process it all, feeling nothing but her softness embracing me. Marina begins humming, gentle and breathing. I recognize the song instantly. It's from Gramps' favorite tape. She probably doesn't even know the significance behind it. I've never even told her, but she remembered it. After all the times I looped it, she remembered. The tears come back, but quieter this time. She keeps humming regardless. It's a little choppy, her voice breaking off in some places due to lack of air, but I adore it all the same. 
I cry and I cry and I cry, letting myself go for the first time since it happened, all while listening to her hum, hiding in my warm, safe bubble with Marina bundled tight around me. Right now, she's the most important person in the world to me. So much warmth, I don't just feel moved. I feel a resounding sense of something that's even more special than that, and I want to build on it. Turning around, I work my way up and kiss Marina's neck. The humming and caressing stop. This time I move to her collarbone. She winches back, tensing up. I pull away. For a moment I feel like crying again, this time out of a, out of a different shade of guilt. But Marina just looks back at me and smiles. I stare back, but she gives me a short nod and cranes her neck out. Then, with a nod of my own, I lean back in, returning to her neck. Aww. God, I miss this game. It's so fucking well written. The glow from the half-open skylight creeps in from above and shines down a strand of light under the blanket. It divides the bed in two and slowly spreads across the room, casting off the morning shadows. My palm is warm and sweaty. Moving my fingers reveals my hand is still interlocked with Marina's. She never let go. I turn over and face her. She's still sleeping, curled on her side and laying on her arm, just as so she can keep holding my hand. Soft and rhythmic, her, brush, her breath brushes against my face. If I could, I'd watch her for hours. Trying not to wake her, uh, wake her up, I unchain my fingers, wiggling them until the numbness sets in and pricks away at my sleeping hand. Runa's nose wrinkles and the steady breathing stops. Swallowing, her eyes uh, flutter open and she smiles. The day's first word slips out of her with a yawn. Morning. Hey, look, actual voices. Cool. Sorry, did I wake you up? Very fitting to what I imagined, actually. Neat. Hey. <laughs> she snuggles in closer and takes a deep breath, keeping her deep, wide eyes on me. You sleep okay? Voice sounds familiar. I wonder if I'm familiar with the actress. Eh. After the fire away, Marina uh, seemed unsure for a bit, but when I look at her now, none of that is there anymore. She's completely trusting. It's a little terrifying that I gained that trust so fast, especially since we pivoted around each other for so long. That kind of trust, that kind of responsibility, it's a very special thing. I had it with Gramps, and now Marina has given the same thing to me. From taking her to a gas station, finding treasure, and even fending off weirdos, she's put her trust in me to be responsible for all of it. Sometimes I wonder if I deserve it. Sometimes I have moments where I don't know. Or where I know I don't. Like when I can't find some lousy treasure. Like when I'm not around to help her out of a jam. Like when nothing I do can save someone no matter how hard I try. Like when I just can't function. Like last night. Marina picks up in my silence. Her expression fades from trust to concern. Something wrong? Nah, it's all good. I slept fine. I lean over to kiss her forehead, but pull back halfway. Ripping off the blanket, I leap out of bed and stretch. Mina turns a crimson red and eats, throwing the covers over herself as her clothes from last night lie in heaps across the room. Okay then. It did go far. I dig through the cupboard and toss her a change of clothes before slipping into my own and beginning our morning routine. We got a big day ahead of us. Assuming traffic isn't crap, we should be in Palm Springs by late noon. She peeks out from the blanket and grabs her clothes. <laughs> and then the festival. Almost. We have about a day to kill. I own the coffee maker and head to the bathroom and start brushing my teeth. Behind me, Marina is changing into her clothes. I can clearly see her in the mirror, but after last night, I'm not sure it matters anymore if I accidentally catch a glimpse of her. So, do you know what bands you'd like to see yet? My voice is garbled, muffled by the toothbrush stuffed into the corner of my mouth. Kind of. I have a few ideas. Ah. <laughs> Spit. Most of which are just bands me and Gramps liked. We should look at the lineup later. See if there aren't a few bands you might want to check out. Finishing cha uh, finish changing, she, she scoots in behind me, directing her eyes to the mirror as she rests her head on my shoulder. <sighs> it's fine. I'll watch whoever you want to watch, Amber. No. I watch the mirror as my face goes blank. Marina nuzzles against my cheek, bringing her, uh, with her an aching burden that presses down on my entire being. Why does she believe in me so much, even when I'm such a wreck? Jesus, fuck! <laughs> uh, 
Fuck me. Okay. The coffee maker beeps, giving me a heart attack. Saving me from being crushed by my own thoughts. But almost giving me a fucking pong. I ripped myself away from her. Anyway, get ready. We're gonna hit the road as soon as you're done. I run to the sink. Steam rises out of the cup as, I, as my shaky hand pours the coffee, splattering mostly on the qu counter. Setting myself doesn't work. My body won't listen. The burning coffee splashes on my skin as I wrench it to my mouth. It scalds my tongue and blisters down my throat. The pain sizzles all the way to my stomach. I gasp at a short scream, but quickly muffle up my hand. With tears forming, I turn to make sure Marina didn't hear it over the running water. Once I'm sure, I wipe my eyes. After several sharp breaths, I pour myself into the cup. <laughs> yeah, that's a mood. Ugh. I drag myself to the driver's seat and slam my cup in the holder, then slam my head, yeah, then plant my head in the steering wheel. It honks. If it had made that noise, I might have actually died. <laughs> the handles in the bathroom squeak and the scent of water is reduced to a drip. A few minutes later, Marina materializes just <laughs> like she's being beamed in. Trots on the motorhome and hops into her seat. I jerk my head up. All set. But, are you sure nothing's wrong? Forcing a smile, I turn the key and put the IRV in a drive. Don't worry, I'm bottling it all up like usual. Don't worry, everything's fine. Just a little tired. Liar. Marina studies me for a few seconds, then shrugs and looks the window, happily stinging the giant thermometer outside. I pick up Gramps' favorite tape and put it in the player, still staring at Marina. Frowning, I catch a glimpse of myself in the rearview mirror. Please don't hurt her. Please. Mm. What? Oh, and it says here that there are giant dinosaur statues just up ahead. <laughs> God. Wow, the enthusiasm is real. <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Oh, it is really just like I imagined it in my head. Uh, it's spot on. That's fantastic. It's so good when it happens, right? Everything she's been saying for the past few hours has been zooming right past me. It's not that I don't understand it. I've read that guidebook she's been pointing to about a thousand times as a kid, but it's all being drowned out by the music and my constant thinking. The drive hasn't done much to soothe the budding anxiety inside me. In fact, I'd say it just made it worse. After four states worth of desert and endless stretches of road, it's maddened to see it all get mauled over by his overpasses in the slowest, most painful and rage-inducing traffic I've ever seen. With nothing but Gramps' tape to keep me grounded, it's been a battle to not go mental. My mind keeps wandering back to Marina, how we're together, what exactly that means, her trust, my responsibility, and the more I think about it, the more I... Th Amber, look at how white the sand is. It's just like snow. <laughs> Her observations haven't been helping either. Whenever I'm about to make a breakthrough or convince myself I'm just thinking too hard, she pipes and suddenly I feel like I'm right back where I started in Colorado. At least I can take solace in the scenery going back to something more familiar as we get closer to Palm Springs. Like Marina said, the sand is a lot wider and looks almost as soft as cotton. It fades into fields of rocks and dry plants, trailing into expansive mountain ranges. All this, just on the side of the road. I think this is the kind of desert people wander around and go crazy in. Something I can very much sympathize with. After all, wandering around in a desert and going crazy how I met Marina. <laughs> I think that's where the seeds of trust and responsibility were sown. At least I like to think that's why she trusts me. Because I helped her. She trusts you because you've been with her for quite a little while now. Not very long in the grand scheme, no, of course, but around you enough and in the right situations for a while, uh, long enough to know that she can trust you, regardless of whether or not you can trust yourself in all this or trust just to accept what she's giving you here. And it's through the next few weeks that tr uh, that trust was built upon, cultivating in something maybe even greater than that. Marina became important to me, someone I had to protect. Whoa, look at all the windmills! 
I clenched on the steering wheel. By doing what we did last night, did I betray that sense of greater than trust? She saw me crying. She comforted me. I made a move and... Oh, God. The realization was like a punch in the gut. I want to swirl this, uh, swerve off the side of the road and hurl my guts out. I used her. I used Marina. Amber, look! She tugs on my seat and points out the window. As far as I can see in the hazy distance, an army of windmills line the sand and stretch all the way to the hilltops. Their wings spin down in unison, cycling the steady wind. With the steady wind. It's enough to snap me at it at least for a few seconds. But once the initial novelty wears off, I'm right back to where I've been for hours. I've never seen so many. <laughs> Marina sounds completely blown away, enchanted even. It's cute, but I need to think this through. Really think this through. Hey, uh, do you think we could actually be quiet for a little while? Please say I... Well, I, 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 honestly, this is an extremely delicate situation. Yeah, that's... Oh, sure. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks. And now she's definitely going to be worrying about you. She goes back to looking at the window, swaying to the music. I would assume so. Maybe she really is not oblivious. So pure. Innocent. And I took advantage of that. Is that all I've been doing this entire time? Using her to make myself feel better? I don't even want to consider it, but it adds up. I was lonely. Didn't have anyone else. Saw a cute girl, picked her up, and consistently used her to curb, all, uh, curb that all while telling myself I was just helping and protecting her. And then I convinced myself of more, hoping to forget about the most important person in the world to me. The tape clicks to a stop, jolting me back to reality. I ejected and flip it around, fumbling with the tape as I shove it back into the player and press play. It starts off the same as always, same static, the first note, everything. But soon the audio starts to slip like someone is sliding on the tape. The music jarbles into something distorted and ugly, speeding up, slowing down, and going backwards all at once. Oh no. I frantically push the eject button over and over, but it's too late. The deck spits out the tape, a string of st uh, tattered ribbon tangled around it. Marina is too captivated by something outside to notice what happened, but I feel all of it. Tears are to swell up deep inside me, but it just morphs into fury. Check it out! That mountain still has snow! Oh god, I'm wincing. I am actually physically... Oh no. Oh no. God damn it! Shut up! Yep. There it is. On that note, I'm gonna end the episode here. Oh boy. Hmm. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next episode. Oh, no.